No. But if it is, then make me pay for it. Thanks for the game. It was um, interesting. I'm going to go through an analysis of that now. So, <laughs> no. yeah, at least at least you played honestly. I'm I'm just really thankful for that. So that was a good game. <laughs> I don't know if it was a blunder or not. I'm, we'll get to it when I go through the anal uh, analysis. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, but, 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 but I'm only a free account, so I don't think I'm going to get a proper full-on analysis of the thing, but try and make it work if it works. How does it get this on, then? Do, 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 do
do, 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 do. So I'm gonna to have to keep going backwards and forwards, am I? Let's see. Is that showing on there? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so this is a nice little nice little game. We're gonna to get to the stage where potentially there was a blunder. I'm not sure if it was a blunder, though. I think it might have been a positional state, but we'll see and see what the computer says as well regarding that. So I did think the opening was okay, but I felt like I was a little bit weak and a bit late coming out to the party in this one. And the night comes down, so I feel like they're fairly strong at this moment in time. So looking to attack the night, keeping it nice and simple, straightforward. And then looking to make space for the dark square bishop, obviously, maybe to come out to here. Don't really like overextending the bishop, but sometimes we, we do. But we're really just wanting to get castled. And so at this point, we bring the bishop out. They bring their bishop and attack in the knight. So it's looking a bit clunky in the centre here. And if you know the style that we play, it's like we just like to get pieces off the board. But because I don't know this player... Um, I was playing a little bit cagey in terms of, well, I don't really know what they're bringing to the table. So I thought I would let them punch out, throw their pieces out as best possible and see how the land lay. See if they could work their pieces together well, see if they were concentrating on castling. So these types of things, I'm just sitting back and waiting because, like I say, I don't know the level of this player really. Um, even though I can see it on chess.com, um, they may come out with some brilliancy that catches me unaware. So I'm steady away. So they pushed this pawn. I did think this was a little bit strange um, because obviously I didn't really see the benefits to it. If it was blocking something, maybe it was looking to block the, the knight here, the knight here, uh, that type of aspect. But it kind of delays this development of this bishop, it looks like to me anyway. Uh, not that there was any major shakes in the game, but from that particular movement there, I would probably expect the pawn to come to release the bishop or go for the fianchetto side of things. Either way, that was a very strange pawn move. So I thought I'll win a bit of tempo by actually going and castling. So at least I can get my king safe based on this uh, one move here that was a little bit losing them tempo. And then there's another gentle pawn push here. So I'm like going, maybe they're losing a little bit of tempo in terms of attacking us. Now this pawn's been brought out to release the bishop, it looks like, to attack our bishop. But there's two pawn moves there that may have lost them a little bit of tempo in terms of developing, attacking and getting a stronger developed position. But like I said, during the game, I stayed quiet, didn't give any narratives. I thought, I thought well, just focus because I don't know this player. So when you don't know a player, it's best to ear on the side of caution. Two tempo moves were lost here, developing the pieces. So now we can attack their piece, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Can't usually be wrong. Sometimes it can, but most of the times it, it isn't. And I'm just thinking because of these two pawns here that were pushed, which were loses, losses in tempo, and the skill that the opponent played, showed later on in the game, I felt this definitely would have been better placed, either bringing it here, bringing it here, because they worked their pieces... Okay, in the end game, and they were showing good concepts and attacks and defense type things. So it was a shame that in the earlier part of this opening, it the timing was lost because these two pawn moves were made here where they could have actually advanced and increased their position on the board. Because at this moment in time, before this position, I don't believe I, w I felt that strong in terms of my position. It just felt I was sitting, waiting for what the opponent was doing. Gauge bars, there are thereabouts, actually. So I don't want to be dumbing myself down if it's not the case. 
Yeah, so it's like 0 0.2, uh, okay. So that's not too bad. I need to put the old glasses on so I can see that, okay. So 0 0.1 for white at this stage, even though they've done these two poor moves here. Now the gauge bar is changing now. It's, it's a bit slow as this gauge bar, isn't it? It's 0 0.3 for white, and black, sorry. And it's going up 0 0.4 for black. And I would basically say it's because these pawns were done. I'm reiterating this point because it is key. If you're looking at developing your game further forward, it's not a coaching thing. I'm not, I'm not schooling anybody. But with me playing this type of system that's going on here, I believe I, that advantage that the opponent had was kind of lost. So we could attack the bishop now, trying to win a bit of tempo. Now we can now start attacking through the center, looking to try and dishevel these pawns as best possible. Um, it could have gone either way, this kind of exchange, but the gauge bar at the minute is showing 0 0.7, but it is a bit slow, this gauge bar, so it may drop at any stage. So attacking through the center just to try and win some more tempi back. So they come and attack our bishop, so then we take. They take with their queen, just waiting for the gauge bar to catch up so that we're singing from the same hymn sheet. Okay, so the queen is now in the center of the board. So we can now take the pawn. So we like to take the, the center, open it up so that we can sort of manage the space around the center of the board. And the previous videos that we've talked about with all the emotional content, the positional plays, all that type of stuff, um, and really finding the right moves to sort of make uh, the potential value of the moves, really looking at attacking the key spaces, the key areas, and really focusing on what is it you're wanting to develop. So we want to work around the centre of the board. I know classically people say um, work in the centre, you want to control the centre. And what we're saying is, um, yes, if you can damage that centre as best possible, the opponents will always be focusing on trying to work in the centre of the board. So that's not going to change. Everybody's going to do that. What we're trying to say is, well, we want to manage around the centre of the board as best possible because every chess player wants to come down the centre more times out of ten. So if we can look at doing that, just taking off pieces in the centre and maybe start focusing around so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, we bring the knight through, attacking the queen, winning a bit of tempo because the opponent takes with the knight, developing our pawn further up. Now, as I said, we like to work around the centre of the um, board, in essence. So this kind of fell into our lap a little bit, but had to be very cagey because sometimes you can just end up trapping your queen in here. And then he's got all his pieces facing your king area. You know, that is doing starts doing damage, opening up space around your king. You don't really want to fall into those traps. It could have happened, you know, if he was risky. Yeah, he could have taken, you know what I mean, and we take back. But it's not opening up our space. It's putting pressure onto his queen. So we still have to be mindful. Potentially the pawns could be pushed down. Don't want my queen just sitting there all alone, not actually being of any impact or value because it's on the other side of the board so these things have to be weighed up so they eventually castle okay um one of those key things again for me is i'm not saying this is right or wrong i, I don't know if this move is going to be right but potentially you know taking the pawn in the center to open things up a little bit to give me something to think about that probably would have given them a bit of advantage in terms of their position on the board yes castling is key most definitely um so there's nothing wrong with that it's just that thing looking at the pieces on here at the minute i'm thinking i'm probably about three tempi up in terms of those two pawn moves going back to those two pawn moves because it's crucial um we probably need to look at focusing on movements that are going to give the opponent something to think about and these pawn moves didn't give me anything to think about and so that's really lost them the tempo. Uh, it's really key for if you're wanting to develop in your game uh, going forward, um, really to focus on, like I say, I'm not a coach, focus on giving, giving the opponent something to think about all the time. And you did do later on in the game. 
So we bring the queen up now. So we're now focusing our energies around the center of the board as we can start developing our pieces. So they push down and again, taking a look at this pawn here. We've already got one, two that didn't give the opponent anything to think about. So I'm sat there going, okay, this is good. This is good. I'm holding my breath. I'm saying, okay, we've got two tempi up. Now this pawn move here, does it give me anything to think about? Do I need to panic about anything? I'm thinking, I don't think so. So this is three movements that have allowed me into the game again. Not me doing anything special. This is what the opponent is actually giving to me as far as I can see in my game. Other purists will probably go, you're talking out of your nose. But for me, this is how I understand the game using the answer process that we're working on. So we've won free tempi because the opponent hasn't given us anything to think about. So we bring the bishop through now. So we're giving them something to think about because our bishop, smaller piece, is attacking their queen. Gauge bar doesn't like that movement, really. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I've not even focused on the gauge bar. Either. I'm looking more at my own personal gauge bar in, in terms of developing these moves. And so the queen moves. So the queen's had to do another move. So we've won another tempi, another time, um, another placement in time because we've won one here. Sorry. We won one here. We won one there. We've won one here. So we've won another one with the queen moving back. So in essence, we're winning time and position on the board. As you can see, we're working around the center of the board. We're not focused on jamming through the center because he does have his pieces there. Um, so now that gives us a chance to take this pawn, this pawn that in essence would have given them the advantages earlier on if he'd taken and then it gives me something to think about so then i'm on the back foot constantly whereas now we've ta we're taken with a smaller piece so again we're attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece okay now at this point here this is where the game i think potentially shifted a little bit because the queen went back now why did the queen go back there's many questions to be asked here Okay, because it is being attacked by a smaller piece. So what would have happened if the queen had taken? So if the queen had taken, now I don't, I don't usually use chess.com's thing, so I wonder if it's going to keep it. Okay, so the gauge bar has gone 1.7. Let's see what it's like when it, this is so slow, this gauge bar. So 1.1 is the current state. And if the queen takes the pawn, it's, it goes up to 1.7 eventually. Now, why is that? It's an interesting situation, isn't it? Because the bishop can put a check on the king here, taking the pawn back. So then he's losing tempo and time he has to move the king out of the way and there's more dangers to to that side of uh, that side of things but why is that so major key thing is ownership of this file as well with the rooks but the establishment of the initial attack would be the bishop putting a check on the king so he's losing position play even more so So with the opponent actually seeing that and they actually move their queen, that shows a really, to me, that's a, a good level understanding of position play on the board because they've come back and protected the pawn rather than actually taking the pawn in this instance. So to me, I sat there and I thought, whoa, damn, that is good. I didn't say anything because I just wanted to focus on the game. But from that moment on, that's when I realized, well, this guy knows something. Yeah, smallest of potatoes. But we are probably five tempi up now because of the movements of the pieces that he's made on the board. And I'm going to reiterate those again. And it is 
the two pawns that pushed down here, this pawn that pushed here, um, allowing this pawn to be taken, and then the queen moving back here. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. That's five movements that have allowed us to be um, slowly but surely gaining some type of advantage. The key thing would be for the opponent to do things to make me have to think and make me do stuff that I don't really want to do. So we go and attack the knight now, so we're feeling fairly frisky now because now we're gaining these times and tempos. We're putting two, two on ones and stuff on the situation. We're attacking the knight here and we're attacking basically around the center of the board still. Losing my voice. So the knight comes back um, looking for protection of the pawn. But at this moment in time, once you've got a backward knight going, it's really quite hard to get that balance back if all of your other pieces aren't working together. Um, poor rooks aren't linked up yet. The knight's now blocked that particular area. So it's not giving me anything to think about. I think there's a common theme throughout this game is that potentially if I had something to think about, I would not be developing my pieces um, as they have been doing and taking advantage of these losses in tempo you know the five losses in major tempo at the start of the game um, has allowed us to develop our pieces so now we're bringing the rook through looking to attack the pawn but also looking to really swing the rook up put more pressure onto this pawn here okay so there's a lot of combination working pieces together as best possible and they bring the bishop back. It's attacking a rook that is actually already on sorry, already on the zone to actually come up and attack this pawn. So one of those kind of things is trying to avoid sending a piece to a good square. You know? Um, I know also it's got the idea of you know protecting this area if we were thinking of doubling up on this side. Um, so there's no issues there because at the end of the day we will potentially focus in on this file with the other rook, okay? So longer term, looking at better position, give me something to think about, because this doesn't give me something to think about. This gives me the permission to carry on with my movement to put more pressure onto this pawn here. Small, smallest of details, that's all. I mean, maybe... If you were looking at being defensive, probably swinging the bishop all the way back here so that your king isn't home alone, and then at least you're working those together quite nicely. Okay, so we brought the rook up, like we said, putting pressure onto the pawn. And the queen eventually takes the pawn. Uh, just wait for the gauge bar to catch up. And da -da 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 -da. So at the minute, it's neither here nor there, really. 1.7... And it's dropped we were two something it's dropped now so we can bring our queen put in a little bit more support on the rook because the queen has done a nice sly move which is good and i was really quite chuffed when i saw that I thought oh this guy has definitely got some skills um but working the pieces together would have been more crucial against me you know i was, I was really expecting that to really um pick up but you understand the game. You definitely understand the game and the attacking. You know how to attack. You know where to attack. Um, but single pieces don't really win the game most of the time. So we brought the queen through and we're supporting the bishop here. Because at any stage, I don't know what you're going to do. So I'm sat here thinking, I just need to keep as much pieces on this pawn as possible. I have a nice diagonal through to the king. So I'm trying to build my pressure up as best possible. I have to support my pieces with my queen. And all the while, um, did it, did it, oh, don't let me, don't make it go off. Disconnected. I haven't disconnected. I'm actually still in the game here. I'm flicking on stuff. You'd think it would keep the connection on. Okay, so, yeah, so in essence, I'm happy that the opponent hasn't put their rooks together i'm happy they're not working their pieces together at the moment so that's what i'm happy with going forward so we could uh, take this pawn now because we've got about 50 million pieces on that pawn they take back with the knight so that's pretty straightforward just um putting the pressure through onto the king 
And now we can take the pawn leaning towards the king area. And then the bishop comes down, giving me something to think about, but not really. And I think we're getting to the blunder part where you, well, you may have thought it was a blunder, but it's a positional situation. Um, so coming here now puts the pin onto the bishop. So at any stage, um, basically, we could take this bishop off the board if we work it correctly. We are looking to try and go for the back ranker. So if you did move the bishop, potentially looking to come here. We're looking for this sort of thing. But it depends on what the opponent does. So we attack the bishop. Okay, so again, this is one of the key things about you can attack a piece, but not if you're going to then that piece then can come and do some serious damage somewhere else. So try and make that attack a good attack that makes you have a better position on the board in terms of um, how you're playing. So now the rooks come and defended. Um, the gauge bar is showing 5.8 at the minute. And we'll see whether or not the gauge bar thinks it was blunderous or not. But it's nice to talk it through. So we bring the rook through now attacking. I'll give the gauge bar a few seconds to think. So 2.3. So we lost a bit of advantage there, but nothing major. And the rook takes at this point. I think it... Was it this one where you said blunder? Yeah, no. So at this stage, it's position, positional because if your rook takes, then if we take, then if your rook then moves to come here, um, you're kind of losing out in terms of development. So we bring the bishop through here and then this bishop move definitely was not... Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, there's no kind of blunder situation in there it's nice for me it's a positional situation winning that all important tempe so now you're attacking a piece but it's kind of too late to the party in a sense because now we can take a higher piece off the board with the lesser piece and then this piece gets pinned to your king so there's nothing else that can be done really on this side so we can look to get your queen off the board but you're not interested in that. So then we can attack the bishop because the bishop can't take the queen because obviously there's a pin through. So it looks like now the queen is going to take. So we're going to be a rook up. So that's then going to be pretty straightforward from that point on. So all in all, that was a pretty interesting game. Um, I do like the lengthy evaluations of things. <laughs> I can't believe you've been staying on this long listening to me rambling on. Um, I hope you found it useful, though, seriously. I mean, I, I'm not a coach or anything like that, and I'm really pleased that you did play it true because I've been able to go through this, even talk about tempes and all that sort of stuff. So I hope you did find it useful. So can push through now and start pushing up, and you have to be careful. You don't want to get any stalemates, but... Um, the opponent can always look for stalemates in these situations and you have to be so careful. I've seen so many games like these types of things lost because the opponent has found a space for their king where they can't move and the opponent's been so greedy at maybe going for a queen or whatever it is and then... <laughs> okay, nice one. Thanks a lot. And that was the end of the game. So thanks very much. That was a, a nice stream. So we've had two two good streams today and I'll catch you on the flip. Old school again. Catch you on the flip. <laughs>